the all new Civic hatchback built in America for the first time. We got pricing and details on it. Let's go. Over at the Honda news page, all new 2020 Civic hatchback goes on sale with Euro inspired design. It's funny, Euro inspired, like it, it, it has been built in the UK previously, if I remember correctly, and now it's being built here in America. So it's more American than it's ever been. Uh, and more importantly, guys, available manual transmission. I will be driving it. Uh, here shortly can't tell you exactly when but definitely stay tuned for the channel and definitely stay tuned by the end of this video because i have a gift bag here i am not in my studio right now i am in phoenix arizona for the lexus nx media drive i can't sh share how it's going to drive of course until the embargo ends but yeah i'm excited to uh give you my impressions when i can on the lexus nx but yeah we'll, we'll go through the goodie basket later but let's get into the honda news we have more than just the civic hatchback to go over today from honda uh but we'll start there because it's it's kind of a big deal. Okay, for pricing, the 2022 Civic Hatchback has a starting MSRP of 22,900, excluding $1,000 roughly for destination charge. So, I mean, you round up, we're at $24,000 for the Civic Hatch starting, 24,000. Do you think that's a, a fair price? Well, definitely wait for my impressions to drive it to see if it's a fair price. And by the way, I, I will be reviewing Civic sedan in about two weeks time. So definitely stay tuned for that. So many things coming for the channel for you guys, the luxurious fleet. Here we go. Civic hatchback is second in a series of new 11th generation Civic variants that will also include high performance SI, which again, I will be driving soon, as soon as relative, right? Uh, and Civic type R models. Here we are, Civic hatchback pricing, breaking it down with the CVT to start. This is the uh, price we talked about earlier, about 24K for the CVT. We're gonna get about 33 miles per gallon combined. Now, upgrading to the Sport, well, how much more? It's uh, it's over $1,000 more. And now, so we're over 25K here for the manual transmission. Of course, this would be the route I would be going more than likely to get that manual, manual transmission. But you could also get the manual with the one and a half liter turbo, which is gonna obviously have a little bit more power on the sport touring model, but that's gonna bring you in at $30,000. That thing's, it's starting to get pretty expensive at that point. Uh, and CVT sport touring is exact same price as the six speed manual. The most fuel efficient out of the bunch is gonna be the EXL CVT costing $27,615 and 35 miles per gallon and about 40 on the highway. That's not too bad. But man, I don't know. I, I can't wait to drive both the uh, the six-speed manual with the turbo and the six-speed manual with the sport. I know the turbo has more torque and power, but it doesn't mean it would be more fun to drive than the naturally aspirated two-liter. Uh, so what would you guys think? Would you save a little bit of cash? Roughly $5,000. Holy cow, I just realized how big of the gap is here to get the turbo model over the naturally aspirated. I feel like the, the natty ass is his... his Maybe the way to go, the sport six-speed manual. Um, like if, if I want to get a six-speed manual with the, the one and a half turbo, I'd probably just get the SI if I'm already forking over $30,000. What do you guys think? Of course, we don't have pricing of the SI right now, but man, if I'm dropping 30K on a manual Civic, it, yeah, I probably would want it to be the SI. So they're saying the hatchback has grown to represent more than 25% of all Civic sales. And heck, it could be more than that with this new generation. I, I really enjoy the looks of the Civic hatchback. I mean, I think the Civic sedan looks good. It's very, very uh, conservative, very Euro inspired. Uh, but I do think the, the better looking option is a hatchback. It's also more practical. Why wouldn't you wanna get the more practical five door option, right? And I figured I'd bust out the spreadsheet here. Made this a while back when we were kind of hypothesizing about the upcoming Civic engines before it was officially announced. And of course, I've updated it with official numbers here. Uh, so here we are with the inline four turbo uh, coming in. If you want it with the manual transmission, why do I keep bringing it up? Because that's the only one that I would be getting if I was to be getting this car again, small percentage of people are going to be getting a manual transmission. I understand, but I have, I have zero interest in a CVT and a Civic. Anyways, uh, yeah, inline four turbo coming around 
thirty thousand dollars uh, with 180 horsepower and 177 pound-feet of torque. And I believe when you get it with the CVT, you get lower horsepower and torque numbers. So a uh, six-speed manual are the numbers on the right for the uh, inline four turbo. Now the base engine, 158 horsepower, 138 pound-feet of torque, but uh, you can ring it out. It's going to hit that peak horsepower at a much higher RPM, be a little bit more, potentially more fun to drive with a manual. Again, I'll have to test it out to know for sure. Even though horsepower isn't as high, the naturally aspirated engine should be a little bit easier and modify in theory as well if you guys are into tuning. But I'm not gonna go into all the details per package. You guys are welcome to check that out. And if you wanna just pause right here so you can see all the different uh, pricing tiers for the, the grades and what you get for those grades, go ahead and pause here. But we got more Honda news. Over at Reuters, Honda targets annual sales of 70,000 70, Prologue electric vehicles in the U.S. from 2024 and forward. That is a huge amount of Prologue fully electric vehicles. And the Prologue should be built by General Motors in Mexico. That's hard for me to wrap my head around. I know I paused my words a lot there because there's a lot of things running through my head. Gondam, General Motors, Honda together, hashtag Gondam building the prologue in Mexico. They're expecting to sell 70,000 units per year starting in 2024. Honda's long-term goal is 500,000 electric vehicles and includes fuel cell uh, by 2030 here in the United States. And they want to achieve 100% zero emission vehicles in sales uh, in North America by 2040. Is it realistic? Who knows? Like, I don't have a crystal ball. It's very, very aggressive of them. They could do it. They could do it, but they have a long ways to go before they <laughs> they get there. But in a recent video, I also talked about how Honda will be building their own electric vehicles 2025 and after here in the United States. So if you don't want uh, the initial batch of prologues, my guess is that the prologue might actually uh, start in a General Motors plant and then with a refresh or a redesign, they could be building it here in the United States. I really don't know. Uh, it's so far out in the future. I'm sure things are still subject subject to change with the prologue, but Honda has said that they're going to be building uh, electric vehicles in three different plants here in the United States around 2025 and later. So, and that's not General Motors plant. So I just want to clear that up. Their own plants. And lastly, because Acura is Honda, Honda's Acura. Acura NSX Type S is sold out in the United States. I made a post on this on my Instagram page. Uh, and it took just 24 hours for the 300 cars. There's 350 cars total for the world. Probably the 50 of those are going to be split between Japan and maybe Europe. But 300, the, the vast majority of the Acura NSX Type S's were sold out here in America in less than 24 hours. Uh, so yeah, I mean, definitely a collector's car. I would love to drive one. I just don't know how Acura is going to be able to get this vehicle out to press or have a have a press event around it because there's just so few models it's not a, a mass market vehicle it's not like they're going to uh like like the tlx type s when they brought us out to the laguna seca for that they're not going to do that for the the nsx type s even though i would i would poop my pants probably but it's not going to happen so i'm not going to get my hopes up driving an nsx type s and giving it to you on the channel but acura honda if you're listening put me in put me in one of these please Love, love to drive it. Anyways, I'm going to end it there. Definitely stay tuned for my driving impressions. Not only the end. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I have, I have to open this up. I promise you guys. What do we have here? Rissler wearable speaker. Wearable speaker. Wear it, clip it, rock it. Uh, so it's like a watch, but it's a, it's a speaker. Yeah, you just wear it on your wrist. You guys are probably just as confused as I am. But, oh... Lexus branded wrist speaker. I mean, with with earbuds and everything, is this really necessary? I don't know. If I put it on my ankle, it almost looks like, uh, yeah, you guys can get the drift there. Anyways, I'm going to put that away. That might be a giveaway on the channel just because I have no idea how I would use it in my daily life. Um, we got some snacks here. Some R bars. That's a mouthful. R bar blueberry breakfast and peanut butter and jelly okay i'll probably say save those for my kids they'll get a kick out of them okay here we go a brock uvc self 
clearing insulated bottle. Uh, so ultraviolet rays are going to clean this canteen bottle for us. And I'm not going to open that. I think we have one last thing here. It's a letter. Lexus's love letter to you guys, all luxuriously. Welcome to Phoenix. We're so glad you're here. I look forward to checking out the Camelback Mountains with you tomorrow. The expansive landscape is ideal for the all-new NX, be it the new plug-in, yes, the 450H Plus, or the turbo gas at 2.4. Interesting. So uh, I didn't know what, what models were going to be available. Presentation is tomorrow morning. So it might just be plug-in hybrid and the 2.4 liter turbo models. It, it doesn't say anything about the 350H or the 250. Hope they're all available, but I'll definitely stay tuned, of course, as always. In the meantime, enjoy the cooler nights in the desert. What are cooler nights? I'm from South Florida. It's just, just as hot in the evening as it is in the middle of the day sometimes. They look forward to seeing us soon from Lexus Product Communications. P.S. We're here to make your trip the best this year. That's pretty lofty. I mean, where they put us up is pretty special. Uh, we are in the Biltmore. I have no shame for me to double check real quick. And this place, the architecture is amazing. It's about 100 years old. This place is really cool. I've only just scratched the surface of, of the amenities around here. But anyways, uh, please let us know if there's anything we can do to make your stay more comfortable. And... Here is my first Lexus name tag for a media event. I'm really proud of it. I'm gonna focus it back on my face. So yeah, thanks to you guys. Thanks to Luxurious Fleet. A little bit longer video, a lot, lots of Honda news and definitely some hyping for the upcoming Honda Civic hatchback, the Honda Civic Si. Should be bringing content sometime before the end of the year. Can't tell you exactly when. And then also stay tuned for the Lexus NX, driving impressions, Driving it tomorrow morning. Cannot wait to share it with you guys uh, when the embargo ends there. But anyways, thank you so much for your support, guys. You rock. Smash the like button, subscribe. All the good stuff. Thank you so much. And peace out.